Welcome back to another episode of the Chaosium House RuneQuest campaign. I'm Jeff Richard and I'll be your game master tonight. I, I first want to thank my players, Claudia Loroff, Linda Borgen, Richard August, Philip Glass, and of course, Neil Robinson. Why don't you all introduce yourself and your characters? Hi, my name is Neil Robinson and I'm playing Nisk, the Orlance Adventurous Hero. Hero? Oh yeah, That's <laughs> kind of more hero wannabe, right? He's a hero. Hi, I'm Claudia Lurov and I'm playing Gina, uh, Gina Ghost Friend. Uh, she is um, an Anala cultist, but with a strong Thai court hack association, and he is dealing with ghosts and graveyards and things like that. Uh, I'm Richard August. Uh, I am playing Garan Grimseeming, a uh, chronically unlucky Umakti bodyguard um, who uh, has managed to basically fall over and get his abdomen opened up at every opportunity. Uh, I'm Linda and I'm playing Ankala, who is a Stormbull uh, warrior and uh, now also a um, Shaman apprentice. Yes. And I'm Philip Glass. I play Colbrast the Simmering, um, a wolf pirate. Uh, what a wolf pirate is, you, you can about see behind me here. That's about what they look like, um, except missing the left arm at the moment due to a small <laughs> mishap in the last episode. In fact, Philip, why don't you give everybody uh, that's listening to this a short recap of what has gone before? Oh yeah, because it was so much fun <laughs> using that <laughs> arm and all. Well, it started out very well. We came to a uh, new palace with this huge army um, with uh, Argrath, uh, the chieftain of the wolf pirates. Um, and we were getting on great, uh, you know, jumping on the wall with this brilliant plan we had of planting strange seeds we had given by Argrath into the walls of the city um, and cleverly, choosing the old gate to do so. Um, yeah, that went really well. And uh, I believe uh, some of us almost didn't make it um, and had to be carried home and treated. But, you know, as it is, uh, as a gift, <laughs> we were asked by Argraf himself to uh, um, be his bodyguards while he does his uh, meditation which is weird because, you know, we, we're just regular adventurers. But we, we're not highly trained uh, <laughs> bodyguards. But anyway, we did this. Um, Carl Brass spent most of the evening standing outside in the rain, waiting for something to happen, while inside, apparently, all hell broke loose, which uh, I only got to hear about afterwards with, with my arm cut off on almost what I thought was my deathbed. Um, they told me that apparently um, spirits invaded the tent and uh, all sorts of things happened. Um, and four assassins appeared, uh, black cloaked uh, assassins. Um, I'm sure we'll hear, hear more about those. Uh, they said they were from the Black Fang. Um, and we fought valiantly and some of us uh, survived intact and others did. So this is now... Um, we're outside of the tent again. Argrath was very, very angry indeed. Uh, and we're all very scared of him at this point. I think that sounds like a pretty good recap of the last session here. Are we ready to move forward to the, uh, the day of the big assault on New Pavis? Yeah. That's okay. Cool so, so Argrath, as, as uh, Philip uh, reminded you all, he um, kicked you out of his presence, was very, very upset that his meditations had been interrupted by uh, Black Fang assassins that you weren't able to keep off him. And uh, you all uh, are have rejoined the rest of the main forces where the army is preparing to assault the breaches that have been made in the walls of New Pavis. And once again, I think it might be useful 
very, very quickly to uh, put up a map of New Pavis for a brief moment. Can we all see this? And you can see there up at the top, there is the old gate. And the old gate where yesterday you had all that fighting on um, on top of the port, uh, on top of the uh, the 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 gate, uh, it is in ruins. Uh, the smaller of the two towers is pretty much well completely gone, and the larger of the two towers is collapsing fast. Um, it it it's in ruins. And the area between the uh, between the towers is pretty much will open up. And because you all led the uh, assault uh, that planted the seeds on the gate, of course, you all were given a position of honor to be one of the first people to charge uh, into the city of New Pavis. There are several other breaches as well. But I mainly have this up because it is entirely possible that you all might have a plan for where you plan to go once you, uh, assuming you break through the lunar lines. Uh, most of you guys, who all has a battle above 25? Yep. I think, Claudia, even you have a battle above 25. Yeah, let, let me see, let me see, let me see. Yes, thirty. Okay, what's the first thing that happens when an enemy army manages to break in um, through the walls into a city during a siege? You loot. Exactly. You, Argreth gave you guys uh, uh, only one set of orders, if I recall. Do you all yes. remember what it was? Yeah, it's a no lunar left alive. Beyond yeah. that, his orders were pretty loose. So a question that you might have is, do you have plans on somewhere to go to loot or somewhere to go to prevent it being looted? Yes. Okay. I want to go to, ne to the necropolis. Okay. The, the people in... Uh, the people in Pavis, they, they, they generally burn their dead, which is very common in Orlanthe lands. And then they put the ashes and grave goods in the Great Wall that you can see there on the lower side of the map, in niches, in the huge Great Walls facing the rubble. So it might be a little bit difficult to get to their version of the necropolis. I that being a, said, what? Well, I actually have a different idea of what I'd like to do. But on the other hand, uh, Gina, there will be very likely an awful lot of ghosts and an awful lot of dead people. That's good. You may be the only one so enthusiastic about that. I, I remember, <laughs> um, I can't remember who it was who overheard the... Um, who lingered long uh, in Argras tent and heard that he was looking for a particular person. Gim Gim the Grim. Yes. Gim Gim the Grim. The Gim, Gim the Grim. What was that, uh, Claudia? It was me who overheard that. that. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm feeling fairly um, dishonored uh, having allowed uh, Argras to be wounded on our watch. Do we have any idea where Gim Gim the Grim may be? Do we know anything about him? Are you from New Pavis? I am not, but Nisk is uh, familiar, I think. Well, Nisk, Nisk, is, Nisk, Nisk grew up in the area, so he shouldn't, before he got exiled. So he may have some knowledge of this area and of, the, of who, the, who they are and stuff like that. I agree. I was hoping to rely on that to work out where we need to go and do. To do. Uh, Nisk, you grew up in this town. You know it pretty well. And Gim Gim the Grim <clears throat> it was a boogeyman uh, from your childhood and uh, adolescence in uh, New Pavis. He was the leader of the feared moon masks 
and the moon masks were are 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 basically maybe they're lunar cultists, maybe they're street thugs, uh, but they all wear these moon masks uh, when they carry out and uh, attack people that have for one reason or another offended the lunar administration, but in a manner that uh, the governor of the city did not want to get his hands dirty and or the the soldiers there did not think it it was the sort of incident that was worth them uh distracting themselves from their military missions so instead he used his his street thugs uh the moon masks and gim gim was rumored to be involved in all sorts of nefarious activities okay well given who i was given that i'm known to um you know, get into trouble and still, and of course, be a devout Orlanthe. My guess is I've had run-ins with them, or runaways is probably more appropriate. You've you've run away from the the moon masks before. So I'm re- I, I may have an idea. I mean, going up, what where they used to hang out that might help me work out where this um, Gim Gim guy would be. Well, the 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 areas that the moon masks were most active in is the area called downtown. And I'm currently focusing the map on downtown. That's basically the area between Old Gate and the Founders Market. Mm -hmm. It's the more affluent part of of the city or the town. And and New Pab, as you can remember uh, this from your kid, it's divided in a group of of districts. There's, There's downtown, which was the wealthiest. There was, and I'm moving the map over to it, Sun Town, centered on the Sundown Temple. Farmer Town, which is the area near the South Gate. That used to be, Linda, where the nomads um, uh, lived. No but more Bob's Bison Burger? There is Bob's Bison Burger. It's yeah. just not on, the, it's not labeled here. Okay. Uh, then there's Old Town, which is basically from Gimpy's, um, uh, to Holy Street, that area there. Then there's the area from the Pavis Temple up the Parade Way and around Temple Court, and that's where all the really impressive temples and and monumental buildings are. There's Riverside, which is this ghetto of of huts and and, and packed buildings, and then there's Rich Hill which do I need to describe it anymore? <laughs> so you tell me, Nisk, where do you think um, you all should be going towards? Well, um, I honestly think that if Gim Gim is who I think he is, he's probably going to try and hightail it out of the areas where we, they'd hang around anyway. Um, so I don't know if I would know any like lunar any bars that the lunars would hang out with or any secret areas there. That might be a good thing to track them down, but that probably wouldn't help us with loot. So those are my two two pieces on this. Um, I think there is a lunar bar though. But... There are several lunar bars. Whether or not um, uh, there will be many people hanging out in the bars during an assault on the city. Yeah, well, like I'm trying to think he's trying to, you know, if he's a cowardly dude who works in the shadows, he'd probably be trying to retreat more than he would, you know, hold himself up. He's seen 5,000 people and they've already took the walls down. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, I'll tell the people that information and try and get everybody's feedback about it. Um, I'm going to yeah. say that... Um, for me, I'd much more interested in sacking some of the rich lunar people would be my preference. I really don't, you know, have a huge thing. I was, you know, I don't have an urge to kill everybody in Pavis. Let's say that. Uh, There's a lot of good I'm people with, here. Yeah. I'm with you on that one. Kill and loot lunars. I do not need to kill anybody. Yeah. I clean up after you guys. Hmm? I think Rich Hill sounds good. Can, can we stop by as the a, Seven Mothers Temple first? Yes, my, my, my professional opinion as a pirate is we should go for Rich Hill. And Rich Hill, if you want to go there, uh, presumably everybody that has heard the name Rich Hill will want to get over there. 
So it would be, this would be a place where if you want to go there, you will want to try to be amongst the first people over on Rich Hill. Yeah. Okay. Because can, we, can we try to get posted at Rivergate? There is not a breach at Rivergate. Oh, that's too bad. The closest breach will be at the old gate. But we could, I mean, the wall isn't that high, is it? Six meters. So, so we could still go over the hall, uh, the wall um, and have the other 5,000 people as a distraction. I, I can't yes. believe we're even considering this. <laughs> given no one's given how we direction. shamed ourselves, we should be in the vanguard, leading the way into the city, attempting to, uh, to, to cleanse ourselves of the sin of, of disappointing our chief. But, but that wasn't our fault. They were sneaky. Mm -hmm. I'm, the assassins were sneaky. Well, we, assassins do tend to be. It's yeah, a, but we did what we could. I, I think we need to, I think we need to uh, expiate ourselves of this, of letting down our graph, personally. I think that's an important, I think that's important. I think we I need to be in the vanguard leading but, the way into the city. I don't think Argrath even cares what we do as long yeah. as lunar, as long as we sack the lunars. I don't think he yeah. cares. And and keep in mind if he would if he would really would have felt let down, he would have killed us. Yeah. Do you have no sense of personal honor? <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> as a pirate, uh, I must admit uh, my honor tells me to uh, go and sack Rich Hill in the most clever way I can think of. As a pirate, you have none of that honor that you're using. <laughs> yeah. I, I, so I, I, I'm willing to go and sack something. I think that's good. I think that we should go for some of the rich um, lunar merchants or something who probably got quite a bit of money in their, their area. And I know there were those, and I know they're in the, the other quarter. So that was, might be my recommendation. Hey, would you make a homeland lore, Nisk? Nisk is going to make a homeland lore. Okay. Uh, how familiar am I with this area? Not, not much not at all. You're, you're a high lama. Nisk does not succeed in his, in his homeland lore. Okay, Nisk, what you can remember, yeah, there's some, there are some nice homes in downtown. But most of the rich lunars lived on uh, in Richtown, like most of the rich people. Okay, well that's what I'll tell everybody. Means you got to run through then. Yeah. Sounds good to me. And you so, guys have horses, or well, horses or something else rideable? No. No. I do. You do. I got bison. Oh, yeah. Great. Not a horse. That's good. Yeah. I like horses. They're just a little bit bigger. I don't like <laughs> horses at all. Okay. okay. So, yeah, I think we're going to have to rush in if that's the case. Mm -hmm. So are we all on the same page on uh, ransacking rich town? Or rich rich lunars. We should be able to see from their building which ones are lunars. You're going for what? By that, I assume you mean, does it look really fancy? and freshly painted. Well, they all have like lunar symbols on them too, right? Oh, Moons okay, and okay. And, and now that we've decided to go there, wouldn't it be clever to take the fastest possible route? And preferably one where you're not the first person to meet lunar soldiers. Okay, what are you suggesting? As I said, I say we go over the river gate. No one have any would... any archers, we'd be in trouble. I don't have that magic anymore to get me up on the roof. The point is that they'll be distracted by an army of 5,000 people rushing all the other gates where there are breaches. And, and we'll be going in over a gate where there is no breach. Mm. I, don't, I just don't think we can get over that gate that easily. Yeah, me either. Well, we got... 
easily onto the onto the old gate, easily not. <laughs> easily. We had a five thousand track. Two arms around. when we were doing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can't even climb anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is- <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh. I actually saying. love I love Colbrast's dedication despite being maimed in his left arm. <laughs> his, his, he is dedicated to the pirate principle, aren't you, Colbrast? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Gino, this would be really bad not not partaking in this loot. Gina, what do you think? You're a good Israelian girl. Do you guys value money? Yeah. Of course we do. I mean, money is there to buy good, nice goods, have nice food, um, mm-hmm. a lot of makeup. By the way, I need some time to make my makeup ready. And the right ha- hairstyle. To so that's what you're going to be. While, while these various uh, barbarian and half barbarians discuss, you know, their, their plan on what route they want to try to kill people, you're getting your uh, makeup on and your hair done. Yes, because okay. keep in mind, I mean, they are ahead of me anyways. I clean up with the ghosts and uh, let, let them go where they want to. Do we, do we have an idea of how soon we have to attack? The reason is um, I would also like to meditate a bit. I'm going to say that it was about three in the morning that you got kicked out of our grass tent. I need some sleep. Sleep is for the week. No. Um, It is, does that sound about right? About three o'clock in the morning? Whatever works the worst for us. Yeah, so yes. Yeah, but I had to torture (laughs) that ghost. All right, so it's about three o'clock in the morning that that you guys are discussing this. Uh, The assault will probably take place shortly after dawn. Uh, What... What time is dawn in March, which is what time of the year it is? 12 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> six. It's probably about 6.30, 6, 6.30 here. So you've got a good three, three and a half hours. Okay. Yes, I sleep. Well, given our, given our um, challenges on the... Um, uh, to come up with a plan, I think our idea is we just kind of rush in and we head down there. I can lead people that way. I think I know enough to get there. So there is it all, all agreed off. you all follow NISC? That's basically the extent of the planning, I think. Does that sound right, Colbrest? I would prefer it if they followed me, to be honest, because I think we'd be less in danger of being killed. What is your reputation? Mine? Yep. Actually, more important, what is your charisma? Oh, just just a second. <laughs> I'll, I'll just get my jewelry out. Um, okay, <laughs> does, he, the, does he get a pity bonus because he lost an arm, or does it actually... How do I use my right? magic necklace? Okay, all you do is you spend a magic point, and for the next two minutes, you get a plus eight to your charisma. So that'll push it up to 21. But, but does he get a pity bonus because he lost an arm or does this actually reduce the charisma? I'd say it makes him even more impressive because he's so determined to, yeah. to, to go forward despite his wounds. I still don't it, want to follow him though. Come and on. no one can make you do anything. Sorry. What is, Neil, what is, uh, Nisk, what is your charisma? Yeah, it's either 17 or 34, your choice. It's kind of your magic. choice. It's, it's your, your choice. choice. <laughs> <laughs> if you cast that spell, I even Colbrast is going to want to follow you. I can't cast it um, because I don't have any spell points, uh, any, any rune points left. I oh, use so them, get, I use only them to pitiful, drive away. Okay. It's only a pitiful 17 then. It's not pitiful. 17 versus or eight to um, try and persuade us to go the other way and see what he can do against that. Okay, I guess we're gonna have what is called, we will have an opposed contest. We're gonna have a charisma battle, which um, may very well be the most important battle we have in the, in, in the combat. <laughs> so you've augmented your, you've cast your, your spell on this. 
So you've you've added um, uh, eight points to your charisma, bringing it up to twenty. So right now your skill 21. in 21. twenty-one. Twenty-one. Your mm. skill is a hundred and five, Philip. Yeah, that's currently. Sounds... Currently, your skill is a paltry eighty-five. Correct. If we're just doing charisma bonuses. Yep. All right, so what are you going to try and do? Are you going to try to augment your charisma? Yeah, can I do that with an orate? I mean, it seems to be. The He's going to try to have a good speech. I'm going to have to offer the same to uh, uh, Colbrast. If he now, keep in mind when you fail this, you can cause your charisma to go down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll listen to him first, obviously, and see if it's necessary at all. Okay, I succeed with my charisma, but just a regular roll with an 88. You do, with your orate, you mean? All right, sorry, yeah. That adds 20 to okay. this. So you are currently also at a 21. You both are exactly the same. Mm. And, and mm. I mean, it's obviously- Shall we go somewhere have... else? <laughs> Nist They're is, both is, very, is... very charismatic figures. We'll see who has the more convincing, unless Philip has a way of raising his with a good I mean, speech. I basically just have to convince Nisk. Um, so I'll kind of boost my charisma with my loyalty to Wolf's Pirates. Because we, we never rush in in front uh, where we don't have to. And I, I just think it's a suicidal mission. It's fun. We get to stab a lot of people on your way. Yeah, with one arm, that's pretty difficult. <laughs> not, it's not very honorable yeah, keep to in wait for others to spill your blood for you. I'm not asking us to be the kill everyone in the front either. I'm just thinking that going on the climbing run is stupid. Oh, you do not have, have to, to hold you. back. You do not really have to hold back with killing. <laughs> okay. You are undermining your own <laughs> argument here, Nesk, on, for me. How do you, how do well, you believe your action Philip is going to further the Wolf Pirates as a corporate body. I'll just imagine all the loot we'll be bringing back uh, whilst charging in from the side uh, into Rich Hill. Then I'll accept that as an argument. He can roll against it. Okay. 80. Uh, yeah, 34. Okay. Um, you have a 125, Neil has a 105. That means you have a hundred, mm -hmm. Neil, you have an 85 okay. on this. The way we're going to do it is whoever rolls highest and still succeeds yep. is the more persuasive. Now, that doesn't mean that you guys, I only want those people who are undecided to be wooed by this. So, for example, Garen, it's pretty clear you have an opinion on this, which is yes. that this is dishonorable. To, to, avoid, to deliberately avoid combat in pursuit of uh, gold alone is decidedly dishonorable. But I, I get the, firmly on this side. But I get the feeling that Gina and Ancala could care less. Kind of, yeah. In Kala? Yeah, I, I do want to ride my llama in. That's kind of the, <laughs> it's such a great entrance. I mean. Now she tells us. And it no, so the wall. So How did she get the llama over the wall? Yeah. <laughs> I still want you guys to roll this one, but. But, yeah, but I, there may be certain problems, <laughs> Philip. You may have made the, 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 the yeah. persuasive argument and had it screwed by the fact that some of the characters have certain obsessions that are yeah, irrational, I see that now. like lava oh. and <laughs> honor. But you'll get clock you backing. Can I sit behind you on the llama at least? I mean, I would just have to run in, and that's just stupid. Can you ride? No. I'll oh. just try to They have a bison you can ride. That's easy. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Okay, go for it, guys. Uh, 77. Ooh. I fail. 90. Okay. Would have been a good Phil roll. Philip's, mm -hmm. Philip uh, Colbrest is awfully damn convincing on this. It's like, it's like Captain Malcolm Reynolds 
from Firefly with a stupid plan. He's got this awesome plan. It makes an awful lot of sense. And even Nisk is going, okay. Mm -hmm. So there's only one problem. Getting the llama over the wall? How are you going to get the llama there? And the humakti. Uh, and the humakti. <laughs> and the humakti is still saying, I'm sorry, but gold is, is, gold is not an acceptable motivation for me. I can, I, I mean, just completely <laughs> hypothetical. You can join us a little. Somebody were to convince me that um, Gim Gim the Grim might be found on Rich Hill, <clears throat> that, that might uh, be sufficient, a, a sufficient way for me to wipe out my, uh, my honor debt to uh, Argraf to persuade him to go along with the plan. But like if the gold is the problem, we can just split it five way, no, four ways and you can just be there for whatever glory comes and <laughs> save us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean. All right, Colbrass, it's kind of up to you to come up with a clever plan to accommodate the Lama mm -hmm. and the Humakti. Unless See, Gina has a plan. The thing is with Zulmakti, I will tell I will tell you, I will not stitch you up again. I'm sorry. <laughs> you you have to you have to make sure that you find a way to go there without getting killed. I or nearly am, killed. If you get killed, please get killed, but not nearly killed like last time. I am fairly confident that even without your admittedly useful assistance, I would have found a way to fight my way off that wall. Okay, I... I... Wrong answer. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that being able to loot the rich Lunars before anyone else is mm, worth see. more okay. than bringing mm. Opie into this, because Opie can stay outside. Opie might, Opie might get killed. Yeah. Maybe he's outside, he's safe. Yeah. You can yeah. even put him outside the, the river gate and then we can use him to carry all this loot back to yes, the camp. Yes, because he's really tall too, so we don't even stand on his back to get up, that, up there a bit. That's what you're saying is Opie's actually a, a way to get up the bit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> actually, yeah. All right, so do you guys have a plan now? Yes. Sure. As long as our grass doesn't mind. That sounds like he doesn't as long as we tackle and kill Lunars on the way. He's, he's not giving you guys any instructions other than get out of my tent. We already left the tent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'd rather spend time meditating and trying to rest up than I, than I would um, yeah. anything uh, else. Nisk, Nisk, about the, this, um, this, this strange personage we have to look for, this grim person. If he's some kind of underworld figure, I'm sure he's hiding out somewhere in a huge mansion on Rich Hill. <laughs> because that's what they tend to do. They never live in the squalid parts of town, do they? I don't know. Make another, <laughs> make another homeland lore. All right. I succeed this time by two points, my first success of the night. <laughs> oh, you no, know, the richest house on Rich Hill uh, is, at least when you were in here, a lunar villa. There the we richest go. richest house on Rich Hill. Um, if you'd like, I can even tell you where it is on the map. Would you like that? You yes? would like that. Sure, that's useful. As I said, okay. I'm willing to go on the Lunars in there. I think that works well. Give us a chance to kill Lunars. Okay, let me just look up in my Pavis guide. And look for the residence in Rich Hill for the Patroma family. Yes, there it is. For the Patroma family. That is, I'm going to share this right here. And a question I have is, can you see my mouse? Yes, yes, yeah. we can. 
Okay, do you see this huge two-story building that has the four dots that indicate it's a rich house? Yeah, between yes. Thane Street and Sa on Safeway, yes. Yes, mm. on Safeway and Thane Street. That is the, the, the villa of the Petroma family. And the, uh, the Petroma are the leading non-military lunar family in the city. Non-military, yeah, right. Well, as in they're uh, they're non-military in the sense that they are not officers in the lunar yeah, army. but but they're not unarmed or anything. Oh no, no, no! Sure. They hire mercenaries. Yeah, because all, that all, might all, have been another problem, you see, <laughs> with with our uh, with our humacti. All right, so um, with that in in plan, Neil. Um, it sounds like you're going to spend a few, uh, a few hours meditating while Colbrast tries to gather. Are you going to try to get a ladder or anything useful like that? I was going to find someone to tend my arm. So just to patch it a bit. Okay. How do we, we still got to get up there. How's that going to happen? Well, I'm sure there's still plenty of these ladders lying around we used for the first assault. We'll just take one of those along. My uh, awakened raven may still have a seed or two. Hmm. Okay, you would you make a in? luck? Would you make a luck roll? Uh, so that's cow times five. Um, that is just a success. And he does have a few of those seeds. Are you going to have your raven persuade your raven to do uh, to to see if they can weaken the area around the river gate? I think I will offer him uh, the choicest scraps from the dead. Uh, I will leave in my wake if he can open the, if he can open a breach for us. Your friend says, "Will you kill someone for me?" So that I'm, I, I, I know it's fresh. I will kill somebody for you and I will take a part of their body of your choice. Okay, the raven agrees. It thinks that's a per, yes. I don't like that. Do I hear that? No, you are getting your makeup done and your hair done. Okay, then I don't care. <laughs> All right. Linda, were you getting sleep or drinking or what? Uh, no, I'm, I am actually not the get drunk all the time kind of person. Um, but I, I don't really remember what meditation did because I do need to get some magic points up. Before there this. we go. Meditation is a skill that if you have it, you get yes. to roll once an hour. And if you succeed, you get a magic point back. Yes, that's exactly and what I'll be doing. Yes. And even more awesome, meditation helps you. It's it's it and dance are probably the two most use. Sorry, it dance and sing are the two most useful skills for augmenting magic. Right. So, Gloranthan magicians they tend to dance, they tend to sing, or they tend to meditate. Yeah. So can I can I can I dance some of my magic points back? No, only meditate will get it back faster. You'll get um, uh, a third of your magic points back by morning. None of your rune points. But I think you've only cast one rune point, haven't you, Claudia? Yep. Uh, I think I'll... Actually, that's not correct, if I remember. Didn't you also cast Heal Wound the, uh, yesterday? Mm, I did. Yes, you did. No, I summoned the dead. I had the only day one before room point left. Yes, you only have one left. So, um, yeah, because uh, the session before I did Heal Wound on our Humakri, and yesterday I summoned the dead to interrogate him. Okay, guys. So um, how about yourself, Garen? I'm just going to kind of go through this. Colbrast is going to see if he can get some bandaging and some, some patching. 
Uh, Gina is getting her hair done. I make, uh, I, I, I try to sleep a little bit, make my makeup and my hair. Okay. Garen? Uh, I will uh, meditate, well, I will attempt to meditate as well. Although. Okay. And Linda, what are you doing? Are you just, are you being really sensible and trying to get sleep because you're on like, you've been awake for, I don't know, 20 hours and have been in two violent combats? Nah, I'll meditate. Okay, or try. Meditate's a form of rest, come on. It is, it is, yeah. if you succeed, if you succeed. <laughs> oh well, what's that? All right, so let's start, start with NISC. NISC tries to meditate, gets lotus position there. 18, that is the success. Awesome, okay. Um, how long are you meditating for? Three hours. Give yourself back a total of five magic points. Cool. Actually, no, uh, longer than that, because what, what's one, what is your current magic points, your, your normal magic points? 17. 17. So give yourself back a total of nine magic points. Cool. You're probably up to total, aren't you? Yeah, I actually have a storage crystal, so I've loaded up that up a bit. Okay, so he's spending three hours doing yoga. I'm, All right, I'm sitting, Linda. Cr I'm, I'm sitting cross-legged right now. That's got to help for something. Yeah, yeah. Go for it, Linda. Okay. How about Ankala? How does she do? We'll see. Ooh, that's a zero five. That's a special. A special success. What is your uh, power? Uh, 17. And how long are you doing this for? Three hours three as hours. well? Full three hours, yeah. You get all of your magic points back nice. during that long. And you are feeling refreshed and in a perfect feeling of balance, ready to kill anything in your way. You're having you're having that 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 wonderful yoga moment of of pure bliss, and now you're ready to just kill. Fantastic! Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that the way yoga should work, Claudia? Hmm. Yeah. And, and Karen, let's see how you do. I do very badly. <laughs> uh oh! <laughs> it's the conscience. Uh -oh. uh, so it's <laughs> 77 against 25, so not even not even close. I, I am too consumed with, uh, <laughs> with <laughs> anger at having uh, let Argraf down to even begin to focus on spiritual practices properly. This, this is, yeah, it's irritating. And you're tired, you're cranky. Uh, what's your power? 18. You get a total uh, for the whole evening, you're back six magic points. So you got nothing for your meditation. Um, that may be enough for you. You may not have actually cast very many spells. But you're, me back up to the sun. Okay, you're not feeling very relaxed. You're not feeling very rested. Um, and to be honest, what's probably even most irritating is you see Nisk. Come on, come on. Uh, show me some some yoga poses there, Neil and Linda. I don't think so. <laughs> wow, just you know, it's, it's, that's it's, a uh, whole other. Oh, there we session. go. That'll do. You know, <laughs> they're doing all this, and Garen is. You just can't achieve. You can't achieve unity with death and separation. You're 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 stuck with trivial. You have all these trivial issues that are annoying you. There is a point, actually, Garen, that that you lose your focus because your foot hurts and your <laughs> abdomen itches. How, how bad does that make you feel, uh, man? How bad does that make you feel? I am, it just compounds the, uh, the anger I'm already feeling at myself. So I am not only exhausted, <laughs> dirty, uh, with a, a great scar down my ribs, I am also extremely grumpy. Yes. Claudia, you look fantastic. Yes. I Gina, do. you you spent it in productive. There was some servant or something, somebody that was uh, captured from Moongate, who is a, a competent hairdresser and and uh, putter up of makeup. 
Um, I'm sure there's a better term for that. And you can describe your look at this moment, and then we're going to go over to the river gate. Okay, I have, of course, smoky eyes because um, we are going into battle, so dark eyes are very, very important. Um, I have a lot of uh, braids, um, and they are really put back, so my hair will not go into the way when I do my special grave dances. Um, I'm wearing completely black, of course, and um, yeah, I um, and um, yes, I look good. I look very Australian. Excellent. So, oh, I have this long fingernail what, thingies on. So, Garen, just to compound your misery, even the grave dancer has made a more productive use of her time than you have. <laughs> All right, let us get to, uh, the, let's move over towards the river gate. It is right before dawn. And I wanna give us a, a I, I'm gonna go and pull back on the share screen so you guys can see this again. So there, there has been damage to the river gate it is lightly garrisoned over here. Um, the vast bulk of the garrison is awaiting the uh, attack of the main army. Uh, you think you can scramble over the damaged wall there pretty easily, but there may be some fighting. Okay, that sounds good. Thing. <clears throat> And I know the way, the, the shortcut. So I'll have people go down. Ideally, if we can, we'll go down safe away, ironically. Because mm -hmm. I think that'll get us there out of the main streets as quickly as possible and right to our target. Yep. So, so line up the alarm, I would say. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, are, is there a specific time you guys are planning to to charge over? Are you going to just do it the moment you get there or what? We should wait until there's commotion at the old gate. Shouldn't we? That's a good distraction, isn't it? Do yeah. we want to be, and this is out of character, this is not something that would occur to me. Uh, do we want to be, say, secreted somewhere down there so when the assault is launched we and everybody is completely distracted and confused about what's going on we can we can make our our move you mean yeah, make up the the uh, stupid question are we the only ones here make a luck roll Oh yeah, La, it's luck is power, isn't it? Yes. I'm power fine. times one. Uh, no other Praxian has had the, they've all got the llama and bison problem. Mm. And the other wolf pirates and others don't know the city well enough to have thought of this plan. So I would say waiting until the assault occurs is a good plan. Someone will have to invent a reason why we have to wait that will convince our Humakti friend that we're just not just stalling for time. <laughs> it's a tactic. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, a, a, it's a tactic. We're, we're doing it to take advantage. What our goal is, is to get in as quickly as possible to the lunar villa where the lunar lunars have stolen the wealth from all these innocent people. That's exactly why we're going there. In fact, if, if we don't get there quick enough, Jim Jim will be there. We've got to get over the wall. Mm. That's very good. I especially liked your little tweaking there of how they've stolen all the goods. It's not like I'm going to loot this and give it away to all the people who lost their stuff. Nope. Nope. <laughs> but okay. Karen, do you important. find this? Yeah. Do you find this convincing? I'm, uh, I'm, I was very convinced by Nist's reasoning, and while I don't share Colbrust and Encala's 
lust for gold, nor is it my business to correct them. It's a big question, Garen. What is your int? That was my next question. Uh, 15. You're not that. You're actually smart. You're a smart guy. I, I, I don't think I've done anything so far which is inconsistent with being intelligent, but crippled by my family's past of rigid <laughs> observance <laughs> of honor. Yeah. And you've also not done anything dishonorable. I mean, you're constantly, everybody is working around. Would we all agree that he is behaving in, a, in an honorable fashion here? Yeah, yeah. Even if his job within this group is clearly, you are the B.A. Baracus uh, of this team, where <laughs> <laughs> every time they've got to figure out a way to get you onto that plane. <laughs> <laughs> it's my dad's fault. They didn't call him. Fiddle the inflexible for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there is, at dawn, there is an ungodly uh, racket from the north and the western sides of the city. There are drums and horns uh, and shouts and, you know, Everything that you would imagine, 5,000 uh, Praxians and wolf pirates and mercenaries would make before they make a charge. Good. What are you guys going to do? We should probably quickly see while everyone's looking up there and sneak over there. Well, I can't actually sneak, but it's not a moral thing. But did you bring the llama in, Carla? Yeah. So why don't we put it against the wall and get over the wall? Did you bring a ladder? No, we have a llama. So you're going to rely? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, uh, someone had to bring a ladder. The llama's we the wall. <laughs> No, we have a llama. Why do we need a ladder? <laughs> Because yeah, okay. <laughs> nobody said, nobody said, I'm going to go and get the ladder. No, we have a llama. Nope. We have a llama. Oh, did you actually bring a ladder? Anybody? No. You brought the no, llama. No, you said, you said the, the gate was good enough to scramble over. So I assumed it was mm. good enough to scramble over without a ladder. You didn't prefix it. No, it's true. So let's try. Let's see how dignified your scrambling is. Uh, um, you, I'm going to give everybody plus 20 because you're each of you jumping on, t climbing on top of a llama, reaching up on top of the llama, and scrambling up over the uh, uh, over the wall. Uh, this is so a vice. Just open the gate from the inside after they're in because I don't feel like scrambling. Kind of choppy. You've got I'm a not opening guy the gate, here. buddy. Hmm? We'll pull a rope down and tie a rope Woo! to put you up, but oh, I'm not going to so, that's, that's a bison, Jack. I know it's a bison. I don't have a llama figure like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cast a spell before I go up over this wall, just to be clear. Which is? Strength, so I have the chance to carry myself over it. Okay. Are you going first? Yeah, I'm willing to try. Okay, climb plus 20. Okay, my strength roll succeeds with a 21. Um, my climb easily succeeds as well. I didn't need the strength spell. Okay, Nisk scrambles over the wall. Who's going up next? Me. Okay, and Kala, yes. climb at plus 20. Oh, this is you know, Garen, you're going to fail this one. 43. You succeeded. It colors yes. over the wall. Who's next? I uh, I'll go up next. Uh, Gina raised her hands first. Oh, sorry. Can I dance over? No, that they, you you got to climb over it, Claudia. You got to climb make over a it. salto. Oh, you're gonna try to use dances and uh, keep in mind you get one augment. Okay, I do it without. Do it without. Yes. Okay, Gina goes on over. Is I'll it now try. Garen? Oh, it's Colbrast. I'll try him. And I'll augment with the movement uh, room. Okay. 
Yep. That's uh, normal success. Okay, so plus another 20. Mm, I need it with one arm. With one <laughs> arm, I might get a minus, right? Yeah, I mean, you're going to get now a minus 30. So you okay. get a total of plus 10 to your client. So that's uh, 55. 11. He goes on up over with only one arm. All right, Garen, it's all up to you, Rich. Will you succeed once with a dice? Yes, I will. 42 against 60. All right, everybody gets on over. Hoorah. Mm -hmm. Hoorah. Let me get over and show the map again. So you get over at the river, uh, river's gate. There are six uh, guardsmen there. Total, of, but only six at where that uh, triangle is. That's about where you are as well. So there are uh, six, six, uh, six of them. They are not the heavily armed hoplites. They are the silver, um, the silver shields. And they look very scared and worried. You, they are also not looking at you. So what do you propose to do? You managed to get over there. I'm gonna, um, I think we're gonna get ready, be it with missile fire, and I'm gonna demoralize them. Okay. I'm gonna give everybody a free are they, round. Are, without... they, are, are they lunar? They're lunars though, right? These are lunar soldiers. Oh, forget that. We have to kill them. Take that. Demor forget that demoralizing thing. Okay. So, statement of intent. Let's start with. Uh, I believe actually, Gina, you have the highest dex, don't you? I have a dex of sixteen. Okay. To, um, actually, I'm going to do it in reverse order. Uh, Nisk, I think you have the lowest dex. That's probably true. What um, do you want to do? What's your statement? I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, toss a javelin at him. I think. Uh, Cobrast. Mm -hmm. I'm at fifteen. Oh, okay. Anybody have a, fifteen? Anybody have lower than fifteen decks? Fourteen. Okay, oh, and Kala, what do you want to do next? I'm gonna cast Demoralize. I don't have any missile weapons. So, okay. Um, yep. Cobrast? Um, I'll throw a javelin. Okay. Uh, Garen? Um, struggling with this one. What's the honorable thing to do in this situation? I will challenge i will i will make a big show as in i will attempt to kind of scare them off and if any of them then turn around we're lunar we're supposed to kill them all our graph gave you a command that's true <laughs> yeah no okay you yeah, know actually that's a very good point yeah i'm gonna chuck a javelin at one of them yeah that, hey, and gina that. I distract them. I go down and dance in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go. Let's first do our round of missile fire, starting with NISC. Just a short question on rules. The, the augment, how long does that, is that just the one the scene, movement? For the scene, for the That's, action you're doing. So it's, you're, you do not have an augment now. Okay. You have augmented your climb. You are not climbing anymore. And keep in mind, I'm not going to let you augment during this combat. Yep. So let's start with missile fire. It's all more or less at the same time. Let's jump with you, uh, Nisk, because you're at the top. All right. Nisk rolls an 18 with success. Okay. He, he is not parrying or trying to block because he's more or less unaware. I'm going to give everybody a plus 20 because you're attacking from surprise. Okay. So that will hit, that will be an 18, and that will be 12 points. Ouch, to the left arm? Uh, yeah, give it back. 
Okay, well, you've disabled, you know, you, you throw into his uh, shield arm. Uh, it stabs in with 12 points. He drops his shield. Hoplite number one. Um, uh, three points. Wow, I mean, his, he is in sad shape. He is a very, very sad uh, hoplite right now. He is at, okay, let's go to the next person, Colbrast. Mm -hmm. That's 43 from 100. Okay, roll for damage. Yep. Uh, six, nine. Two. Nine points of damage to yep. where? 16, that's, I believe, the, the left, left arm. arm as well. Yep. Yep, I, I only hit at left arms for some reason at this point. So nine points of damage? Yep. All right. Um, he is also in, in bad shape, drops his shield. This is already, this is a, the most successful use of missile weapons I've seen from you guys so far. Um, let's go for you, Inkala. Yeah. Um, I'm a bit uh, confused as to what to cast on the spirit magic here because... Demoralize is always a good one. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm casting it, but with... with Power spirit. times five. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yep. Easily, easy. Um, I think that might actually be a failure. No? Yes? Yes, it's a failure. Okay, Hoplite 3 is fine. <sighs> Darn it. Yeah. Let's go to you, Garen. Okie dokie. I am at 90, and that is a 68 against 90. And that is a 7 damage. Two, oh, a one. Is that the head? Oh, no, no right one leg. One is sorry. the right leg. Right leg. Seven points of damage. Okay, his right leg does not go down, but that is a that is still a serious wound. He has one hit point left in it. Uh, Claudia, let's see how your dance goes. So my idea is actually to do a nice thing where, because I know they will get killed in the next few minutes by the others, so which actually brings their soul directly into the underworld to take or attack safely. So I'm already preparing their souls to make the smooth uh, shift to the underworld. Okay, so you're being altruistic towards these poor learners. You're trying to make sure that they you're trying to make sure that their souls are welcome to the path of the dead. Yeah, which makes it easier for the others to get to, uh, to kill them. Okay. Because the souls want to leave. Okay. Yes. Dan uh, successful. Okay. So um, you four are making attacks and whooping it up, and meanwhile, your performance dancer is performing a spooky dance. Claudia, let's see some spooky dance moves here. I do not have this long fingernails, I'm sorry. They are that long. Um, it, it is a new round. Uh, are you guys gonna charge or gonna throw more missile weapons at them? Charge. I'll definitely be charging. <laughs> Cobrest? I'll throw a missile weapon. Nisk? Um, Nisk has already thrown his javelin, so he's going to charge. Okay. Hoplite 1 and 2, who have dropped their shields, are just running. They're, they're, they're booking for it. Hoplites 3, 4, 5, and 6 are made of slightly sterner stuff. Uh, and... They all put their shields up towards you all. Um, they don't manage to form a, a, a shield wall or anything like that, but they have it to deal with any missile weapons. And 
uh, they um, they shout as intimidatingly as they can in New Pelorian. Does anybody even understand New Pelorian? So they say gaba gaba hey. As far as you guys are concerned, very 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 intimidatingly. Okay, let's see it, guys. Uh, okay. Missile weapon attack from Colbrass. That goes yeah, first. I'm just wondering. I probably don't actually have a second uh, <laughs> javelin, so so I'll just not charge, but sort of go into the fray behind the others. Okay. Um, let's jump to this with you guys. Who attacks at strike rank six or before strike rank six? Uh, I would. I'm at five. But you're. I'm holding back. You're supervising. Hmm. Everybody else is at strike rank six. I'm at, at six. six. Aaron? Uh, I am at a 10, I think. Ten? Uh, broadsword is at six, and then four, uh, then two, dex, two. No, Sorry, no. So, yeah, 10. 10. Then the, what is your dex strike rank? Two. And your size strike rank? Two. Seven. Seven. Okay. Uh, and Claudia, have we lost you? Ah, she's taking a quick pause. Uh, she continues her dance. So um, I believe you're the only one. Um, Nisk and um, Kala all attack at the same time as the hoplites. Okay. Who's the tallest of you guys? That would be me, I think. Oh, might be Inkala. How big are you, Inkala? Uh, I'm actually not that big. Oh, I thought you said you were earlier. Okay. I feel I, I feel big. I'm a woman. You are. You feel you are big. You are big. You're <laughs> mighty. Um, Nisk, you have two against you. Okay. Um, and Kala, you have one, and Garen, embarrassingly, you only have one. Okay. I'm gonna split my parry. Okay. I'm over a hundred right now. All right, so shall I have they roll, them roll for uh, against you first, and then you roll? Makes sense. They got the spears. Yeah. Okay, spear number one, hoplite three missed. Hoplite two, hit. Okay, I, parry. Parry. I parry successfully. Okay, he cannot get through. Um, you have 12, um, 12 points? I do. Okay, in theory, he could do one point of damage to your um, shield, which I'm gonna roll anyways. Nope, chinks off your shield. Great. Nisk? Like I'm slashing down on him. I'll go on that okay. one, because he's obviously the more confident one. Number four. Okay, I succeed. And number four rolled a zero, zero. <laughs> so I've realized my best ability cause enemy to <laughs> induce fumble. Induce fumble. So um, this is kind of almost pointless for me to be doing. Um, you automatically hit. Okay. So even if you missed, you hit, but now you definitely hit. Oh, different dice here. Okay, well, he's, his abdomen is hit for a whopping uh, 14 points. Uh, he goes down, dead. Claudia, you get somebody to dance to. First one down, dead. Hoplite four. I dance around. Uh, hoplite number five, uh, in Kala, same time. Let's roll. I'm uh, I'm using my passion hate lunars. Okay. I'll roll that first. Uh, that's a fail too. 
Darn it. Minus I'm, 10. Minus 10. Ah, oh, that was not good. That's also a failure. <laughs> and I also failed with my attack. So your attack is just utterly, both sides, you guys both suck. It's unimpressive. Garen? Um, can I use Blade Sharp on myself? Yes, you can. So I'm going to put five points into Blade Sharp. Okay, that will do a lot of damage to anybody. You only have one spirit magic spell? <laughs> Blade uh, sharp. <laughs> I have two. I have Blade Sharp and Detect Undead. But remember, he starts with a bunch of uh, all Humakti get uh, points oh, Blade okay. Sharp to begin with. So he cool. threw his five points onto it. I mean... I'm just jealous. <laughs> so, however, that means he gets to stab at you first. Oh. <clears throat> And I roll an 86, which is a failure. Garen, you didn't fumble, did you? I did not. Okay. So let's see. You are plus 25 with your spell. Plus me 125. Okay. 100. 100. And, sorry, yeah. and, but that means my parry is minus 25. Uh, and so I, I failed. Excellent. I failed. So would you roll 1d8 plus one plus five plus your damage modifier? Because you have blade sharp on. Uh, that will be a total of 12 points. Two. Okay, two. Oh, and his right leg again. Well, this is a different dude. Oh, um, okay, it's a different right leg. <laughs> uh, 12 points. Yeah. So that is. He goes down on one leg. Claudia? Yep. Shall, you I, can... give... What? Shall I give him the last bit? Which is? Yeah, no, I'm dancing, but I could use my dagger. Well, he's dead. Oh, he's dead? Yes, first one is dead. Do you yeah, want to... but, but the second one is on one leg, you said. Yes, you could attack, you could help Garen and use your dagger. On the other side, the first one is dead, so I have actually to really get, put the spirit on its right way and so on. It's very important. Hey, it's, it's a new round. Um, there is, each of them are engaged in melee combat with you guys. It, the melee combat is not going great for them, but it's not going so, well, it's actually going terribly for them. Um, Hoplite 3 and Hoplite 5 are going to try to disengage to run away. So if they survive this round, they're running away. Okay. Hoplite 6, who is fighting Garen, is on one leg and on the ground, and he cannot run away. So let's go to Nisk. All right. I'm back at full strength now. Does he attack first? You can do that again. Uh, he does not attack. He only can parry. Oh, because he's trying to get away. He's trying to disengage. All right. Okay. I succeed with a hit. I succeed with a special parry. I don't think I'll do much then. Okay. Um, that's 11 points to the shield. Nope. nope. Doesn't even get through his damage his shield. And Kala. Yep. Same deal. But he's running away now. Oh, Nisk. I get to hit him in the back. No, uh, Nisks is running away. Oh, okay. No, and Collis is retreating too, you said, right? And Collis is trying to run away. Uh, do you succeed with your attack? Yes, I do. Normal. I succeed with a parry, so roll for damage. Five plus 10. 14. Okay, you do some damage to a shield, he still runs away. And finally, Hoplite 6, who is on the ground. You have a plus 25 to hit him. Garen. Excellent. Let's deliver the coup de gras. Um... I have a 5% chance of blocking your blow. Oh, that is a 58, so it's a hit. Uh, I fail. 
and that is uh, 14 points of damage. To where? Uh, nine. So is that abdomen? That is the abdomen. He dies. And I have fulfilled my bargain with the raven. Okay, Claudia, there are two dead, uh, two dead there. <coughs> Guys, the next round, there are two running, there are two that are, have gotten a fair amount of distance running away, um, and two who have disengaged and are trying to run away. What is your plan of action? Again, I'm pulling up, let me pull up the map here. I get my tools out. To prepare the corpse? Yeah, at least, I, I mean, it's, it's, they're still very fresh, so I'd have to let, at least get the brain out of the nose hole. Uh, we kind of got to run here. Yeah. Turn Did you carry one? Uh, I'm busy. Well, I'm not going to guard you this whole time. You should. No. I mean, if you die, you want to be prepared properly. Um, having someone pull my brain out through my nose is not how I wish to die. I want to be burned like a good or No, right. you're already dead. I mean, these people are already dead, but keep in mind. Then we don't I have mean, to worry about them. You can deal with it. You can drag one if you want, but we've got to get to this place and get in. Mm. I'm a weak woman. I cannot drag any one of these. It's only a two-minute thing. So, I mean, we are actually discussing longer than it needs. All right, I'm what are you guys going to do? I'll drag one to the to the hall to to the to Safeway, but I don't want to leave it out here and do it. It makes no sense. It does. I'll, I'll just have a look around what's happening in the city. I mean, we're on the wall now. People so. are well. It's there is screaming and such going from to your north. Uh, screaming and the the smell of fires and such. Uh, as the siege, uh, or sorry, as the assault is taking place. Uh, there are a lot of, there are people, you know, people have, are, are there's no people out on the streets. The, uh, the few soldiers that would be left anywhere here are trying to rush towards where uh, the more important locations are. So it's basically empty streets. It's like Berlin right now. Yeah. So, so we have to get going because soldiers yeah. are coming to, uh, you know, guard the, the rich part of town. Yeah, we need to get to that house right now. Exactly. Okay, so tell me what you guys do. I want to run, go towards Safeway. Safe Running way. to the Safeway. Down there. Yeah. I'm okay. Gonna do the same. Gina? I follow as soon as I have some brains. Would you make a prepare corpse skill? You'll be a few minutes behind them. Yes, I do. She's very dedicated to her job, guys. Yeah, we, we noticed. <laughs> kind of. Oh. No, I rolled a 93. I need a few more minutes. You did a terrible job there. That yeah. person, that Pushed person. Me. Yeah, yeah. And that person is going to suffer forever in the Hall of Dead thanks to your screw up. <laughs> yeah, I got the wrong nose hole. <laughs> Sorry. Very disappointing. Very disappointing. Okay, um, you guys run down Safeway um, to the uh, Patroma Manor. The door, of course, is closed and locked. I don't know if you all have a plan for that. Knock? Yeah, you know, they're not leaving the door of their villa um, open and unlocked. It's an opulent two-story villa. Um, and it, it is clearly a place of much wealth. Does it have a garden at the back? Uh, can you see it on the map? Yeah. That does not, um, it does not even have an internal, although it probably has an, um, an open space to the air, it does not have a, um, uh, a courtyard even. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh. Wolf Pirate, how do you get in? 
knock at the door and say we're the army coming to um, rescue the uh, inhabitants. Uh, how many uniforms did we get from the... None. None. Did we not bring any of them with us? No. I thought we were prepared... Oh. Um, can it's somebody not go back and grab a couple of cloaks? Yeah. Deals? Well, well I think we, they can look you... outside anyway. Um, I'm gonna, I mean, they're gonna know we're there soon, right? Do you want me to just hammer on the door and yell at them in Tarshite? Yeah, that's a good plan. Yeah. Always works. I mean, they're, they're in panic. They won't think, oh, let's see if they've got uniforms on. I hope. All right. All right. <laughs> what, are you try to say, what are you trying to say in Tarshite, Neil? I'm going to say that um, um, hammer on the door and say that Jim Jim has brought in Tarshite and um, Jim Jim has brought, us, has brought ordered reinforcements for you. Open the door, let us in. Oh, oh very good. Mm. Now, that's the question here is. <clears throat> How good is your Tarshite? Tarshite is very good. It won't, it won't impede my other attempted skill use. Okay, make, what is your attempted skill use? I think this is a fast talk. This is definitely a fast talk. All right, I roll a zero five. Wow. Which is a, which is a special, even with my wonderfully low fast talk. All right. Um, they open the, the they're going to open the door here because again, the city hasn't fallen yet. There hasn't been those, 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 those bells of action. You, you were speaking in Tarshite. They open the door. What do you do? That, um, rush in. Hmm. <clears throat> Who always rushing in? I am hopefully Garen. <laughs> okay. What is your oh, strength? Hey. 16. Uh, 16. Mm -hmm. uh, 21 right now. Uh, 50. Yeah, 50. And Kala? 14. And Gina? I cannot find it. So, uh, on the top left? First page? Top left. Oh, by your pow and your strength and your int, right? Yes, damage bonus. No, go up further. Just up two lines from there. It's a core stat, Claudia. Yeah. It's goes to strength, con, oh, size, oh, dex, int, pow. If you got damage bonus, it's just two lines above. I don't see it. Can you see your pow? Yes. Okay, we'll go one up from your pow and then one left from your pow. Right above pow is con, right? Mm, yeah. And what's the one to the left of that? Size. That's strength. Uh, the, the left is strength. The right is size. Yes. So what's your skill? What's your level? Ability? Oh, 10. 10 strength. All right. You guys possess more than enough strength to, once the door is open, to basically uh, push, uh, push your way in. Even if even if Gina does the least on this, despite taking the most time to figure out how strong she is, um... <laughs> not important for me. Exactly. I have people who are carrying actually the dead for me. Um, you open it up. There are um, four mercenaries in here. Um, <laughs> four tops uh that it's they very quickly realize that you all are not uh lunar soldiers but i am going to give you guys the drop on this to make an action before they really know what they're doing and i'm going to start slow a person who has to decide fastest is going to be nisk because your dex is the lowest yep nisk will demoralize one these are okay. missionaries not lunars they don't have to kill them do I make the roll or? Oh, yeah, no. let's just start with it. Uh, no, um, oh. Colbrast? Mm hmm. Um, I'll cleave one with my broadsword. And Kala? I'm also doing demoralize first. Garen? Immediately charging at the nearest. And Gina? Mm, I go out of the way. Okay. 
It's a very nice, by the way, it's a very nicely apportioned uh, villa. You're probably the only one who could really appreciate this aesthetically. <laughs> Are um, you sure there were Australian artists involved? Uh, there's even new Pelorian stuff from the Heartlands. Uh, Cobras, let's just jump to you. Mm -hmm. uh, nope. Okay. Let's jump to you and Kala. The spell goes exactly on the percent. Okay. Would you, your power is 17. Yep. Uh, you have, this is just an ordinary thug. So I would say you have an 80% chance of overcoming his power. Yeah, not a problem. Yes. Okay, Thug 2 is demoralized. He does not want to fight you guys. Nisk. Uh, spells goes off on a 56. And I have a 17 as well. Same deal. Okay, I succeed. Okay, Thug 2 and 3 are demoralized. How about Thug 4 against Garen? Uh, so I am charging straight at him and making this huge, devastating uh, swing with my broadsword. So that is now, a 43. Keep, now keep in mind, you do not have Blade Sharp anymore. I've still got 100 in, uh, in uh, broadsword. I'm fairly confident. Okay. All right. And I rolled a 99. This is not my night. Last night I was doing much better on uh, uh, <laughs> uh, rolls here, I think. 69. Um, that is just embarrassing. His hat, his big impressive mercenary hat, it's a big cap with horns on it, you know, in total sword and sorcery mm -hmm. fashion, flops down over his eyes. And he's like, he he wants you to to give him a chance to fix his hat. He's really lucky that he's fighting <laughs> against <laughs> Garen. <I think. laughs> However, Garen, you get your first attack before you have to decide this. Excellent. Did okay. you hit him? Uh, I did. Yes. Would you roll for damage? Uh, I will. But then afterwards, he's going to be really upset because this really isn't fair or honorable to attack a man whose hat fell over his eyes. Uh, that is eight points of damage. Two. Plus, plus one. Yeah, that's it, including the plus one. Do you have a damage bonus? Uh, yeah, so it's a, a D8 for the broadsword plus a D4 plus one. So that, that came to uh, eight. Uh, and that is a six, which is... The left leg. Left leg, which we are really taking out left legs tonight. He goes, thug number four goes down on the ground. Left leg, that was eight points of damage? Yeah. Just the, 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 the cruelty that you guys have. Trying to make a living here, you know. We've been yeah, exactly. after the first couple of sessions. All right. Um, it is a new round. Two and three back up. Um, thug number one, who is up against a uh, Colbrast, um, uh, says, "I'm just a, uh, um, I'm just a cell sword. I'm just a cell sword. Um, I have a ransom, not much, but I have a ransom." Two and three are demoralized, and uh, number four says, hey, 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 <laughs> my hat. hey, my hat. <laughs> Tell me where your master, Gim Gim the Grim, is to be found, and I will spare your life. He says, I mean, they say, we'll tell you, uh, uh, where our master is, if you agree to spare us. You have no real honor, but it would not be honorable to kill some thugs lacking so greatly in distinguishing characteristics. He's so tell us where your master is, and uh, I will allow you to 
toddle off into the distance like the children you are. Drop your wait. weapons and go. Um, wait, there was one point about a ransom. The other yes. guys. The, but it's not a lot. Hmm? It's not a lot. Well. But just make this, these guys aren't lunars, right? They're just no. local cell swords. Yeah, so it's... So, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, so we could just let them go. So you let them go? Only yep. once they've told us where the master is. Well, further in, the uh, further in is their master, who is not Gim Gim. It is Malavar Petroba, um, in in one of the inner rooms in the villa. There is a obscenely fat man wearing fine clothes, who's basically, you know, taking a mm. position here. He is. Uh, 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 terrified. He, he looks a. Lo he looks exactly like Sydney Greenstreet. Does anybody remember Sydney Greenstreet? It's like an older, fatter Sydney Greenstreet. Uh, for those of you all who don't know who Sydney Green uh, Greenstreet is, uh, he is the American actor from the Maltese Falcon and from Casablanca who played the fat villainous uh, figure. Mm. Uh, so he's basically a, a fat elderly obese man. And there is a, um, a young woman uh, who is holding a, uh, uh, a rapier at you all very competently um saying uh uh not to come any further you all might you might be able to 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 kill me but i'll take one of you down with me it's okay and she seems very competent with her uh the way that she's holding <coughs> her her rapier and the old man says um uh uh, he says, do not harm me, do not harm me. Um, I, I offer you my, my ransom, uh, surrender. You cannot, uh, 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 I, I throw myself at, at your mercy. Simply do not harm me. Do not harm me. Oh, do we have time to bar, to get the cell phones out and bar the gates here? So it's, we, so we own this now, we control this now? If you want. I'd like to. Mm. Yeah. Who all is doing that and who's staying in this room? I'm staying in the room because I'm not good at barring stuff at the moment. Adia? No. Nope. You're staying in the room? Mm-hmm. Okay, no, I'll go Darren wants to guard the door. The yeah. guard. Somebody should bar it. I'll go bar it. Okay, you bar the... All right. Um, Malavar, uh, the head of the Petroma family, is offering you all, um, he offers you all a hundred gold wheels for his, um, for his life. A hundred gold wheels mm, is enough. a lot of money. That's probably twice a, a noble's life price. So it's a very reasonable ransom. Mm -hmm. And he offers the same for his uh, niece. His niece is the bodyguard? Is the, bodyguard. Is the woman, yeah. So he's offering 200 gold wheels. Should we ask him about Gim Gim? I, that is my, my instinct. Okay. Who, who wants to parley with him on this? Who's the uh, who's best? At He's the still alive. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Where's Gim Gim? Uh, the governor's clown. The governor's yeah him. <laughs> I, more I, foolish I, than I think. If you don't know who Gim Gim is and what he can do. He seems very, um, he seems very confused by this. Um, and 
he seems very, very confused that you're asking him about uh, uh, Gib Gim. He says, I presume with the, 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 the wherever the governor is um, or with the priests. He says, but do not harm me. Do not harm me. I have nothing to do with, 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 uh, um, with, the, with, with whatever uh, deeds they have done to harm you. I am a simple man of business. Simple man of business, sir. I, I, I try to stay out of politics. Yes, yes. Politics are not good for your, uh, they are not All good right. for your health. Homeland lore on this guy. Is he, is he saying, telling the truth? Actually, no, it'll be insight. What have I got okay. that insight? Insight own species. Okay, 27 is a success. Um, you're familiar with the uh, Sydney Green Street character for the Maltese Falcon, Neil? I think so. Yeah, he's a rat bastard. He's a rat bastard. What do you, uh, uh, you get the feeling that he will say anything uh, to not be killed. Oh, indeed he will, sir. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, um, yes, sir. I think you're worth, a, I think the, the, the wealth here is worth a lot more than a hundred wheels. And to be honest, um, you know, with the city falling as it will, uh, I don't think it's worth, I don't know if it's worth taking that up on you. Um, I have actually an idea. I could show him the two brains I have in a jar. Okay. Maybe that makes him a little bit more talkative. He's very talkative now. He's very... Yeah, he but says, he would then uh, focus his talks. Um, okay, he is now very focused. He says, what do you... Uh, uh, sir, I, 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 I have no truck with brains in a jar. No truck, sir. No, none at all. Uh, uh, do not take my brain out of my, my my head. Leave it precisely there. My brain works best in my skull. In my skull, sirs. So what wards do you have here and where is your wealth? A mere, you're, you, you are worth more than a mere hundred wheels, aren't you, personally? He, he, he says, my wealth is in... In, in in caravans and and businesses and and such i oh, oh, oh anyone like you would keep their wealth with them as close as possible don't insult me he, yeah where, where is your treasure chest he he the practicals um, will string you up and eat you they will tear strips off you you'll be lucky if another <laughs> brain is left to put in a jar how, how I go. I go it? weary of this. Uh, oh. He says. Uh, actually, the woman says. Uh, 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 uncle, um, if they will protect your life, um, what wealth we have here is. Um, <laughs> Uh, worth spending. And he, he says, oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, I have, there is the, 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 the um, chest I keep of monies that I hold for such, just such an emergency. Yes, yes, just for just such an emergency. And he, um, uh, you know, he, he will offer to show you where that is. Good. Fair enough. How long does it take me to bar, bar the door? Am I Not backing? very long. No? Okay. <coughs> but he says, he says, looking at the Humakti, you look like an honorable man. Yes, uh, uh, a good honorable mm -hmm. man. Men with honor. Uh, do I have your oath that you all will not kill, uh, harm me, or, or sell me into slavery for being a slave would be a terrible thing? Oh, no, 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 no. An old man like me, definitely not meant out for this. What good is honor if it is bartered away with the dishonorable? So long as you observe your part of any bargain we strike, then I shall ensure your safety. And we will show have offered to pay, so you must pay. He oh. will... What? 
Oh no, I'm just uh, I'm just thinking how deep he's tangling himself in there, Garen. Yeah, he'll make Some it. Some promises and orders and all that. He will um, <laughs> offer you all his treasure chest, which is it's a lot of wealth. It's um. Let me, do you guys count it now? It's a small chest filled with- No, with, we grab it and go. Is it more than a hundred yeah. wheel stones? It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It's gonna be an RQ2 style uh, treasure chest. But, 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 but leave no Luna left alive, guys? That is the final question for tonight. Now, he's fulfilled his bargain Serena, uh, the woman, uh, uh, says uh, that that uh, they throw themselves under your protection. Looking at the Humakti, he's given us all his wealth. I will give him. I will tell him the way to get out of here. Hmm. I will give him a head start of ten minutes. Then I will consider our part of the bargain to be fulfilled. We've not harmed him. How honorable do you feel that you have been here, Garen? I feel I have been strictly honorable within the terms of the oath we've made. Did made you promise his... ethics, But I have not compromised my honor. Do you feel a little bit unclean? Yes. Oh, it's, it's so dirty. Would you roll a d6, my friend? <laughs> if he's rubbing himself in the, yeah. in the, in the river. Roll a d6. Uh, and that is four. Knock your honor down four points. Because it's at 100. Mm. I'm going to start. When your honor is at absurd heights like it is now, if you even feel like you've done something dishonorable, that's it. But you let the, him escape. Yeah. And I'm you okay let the, him and the niece escape. Mm. Then we, you we, even, we even show them where to go to get out of the out of the city. Oh, it's very appreciated. They skedaddle. They get out of there. And uh, the, this is the prelude. You all, I'll, I'll work out what the actual goods were are that you took here. But you. Uh, when our graph and the way that the rest of the fight went, um, went, I, I will narrate this very quickly. Um, let me throw up the map. Okay, you see this? Yep. Um, the bulk of the army charges through the old gate and the marble phalanx held out as long as they could but the, the Praxians were too much and the um, uh, Argrath and his companions headed down a parade gate killed the lunar priests and such that, that were at the Pavis temple um, Someone found somewhere in the city Gim Gim the Grim, and Argrath ordered him torn limb from limb, and the limbs to be scattered um, in places throughout the Big Rebel. Didn't give you guys the job of taking like a leg and and bringing it out to the Big Rebel or elsewhere. Uh, and he says. Uh, Argrath pronounces that this is what he does to assassins um, and those that would kill without honor. So I don't know how you feel about that, uh, Garen, but or or Nisk, but he orders him torn apart. He takes over. Uh, parts of the city get burnt, of course, in siege. Uh, downtown gets uh, damaged pretty heavily. Uh, the Praxians do a lot of damage to the farmers area because it used to belong to them and so the nomads uh, uh, loot it. Argrath takes the former lunar headquarters as his personal palace and 
Uh, we will edge in and next session we will zoom far ahead into the future uh, and go several, we'll jump forward several seasons as you guys have set forth in the newly occupied city. Uh, what I would like is that you guys get a chance. Um, actually, I'm going to do that next session. Next session, we will start with experience checks, power gain checks, and sacred time activities. So basically seeing if you get your rune points back. Uh, but there you are. You guys have looted this. And the only question I have is, are you guys going to lay claim to this villa? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Okay. <laughs> So you guys are going to lay claim, uh, lay claim to this, and that is this is a good stopping point for where we will go, and um, uh, we will do all those experience checks and the rest at the beginning of the next session, if that's okay. Yep. Okay. With that, I want to. Uh, is there anything anybody wants to immediately add in before Can I jump in? Can you stop down? sharing? Oh yes, of course. Sorry. I believe that's on the, uh, is that on the conference call bingo check? Something like <laughs> that, yes. So thank, thank you all. Um, and uh, thank everybody who watched this and tune in for the next episode. So let's see you guys next time. Great, thank you very yeah. much. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.